and welcome to another teacher talk session tonight and tonight we are going to have our 85th session yes it's really it's really great number for us and for you too also and tonight we are going to visit Romania yes our our guest is tonight going to be from Romania and she is a teacher trainer and also she is a coach and a mentor uh, maybe probably you know her and she is Julie Lehner and when she comes we are going to start our live session with her I think she's here so let me invite her to the live session then we yes it's going to be a really interesting session with her tonight and very fun. there Hi. she is hello Jelly. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you and I... it's great to see you too, Gokan. Before starting our live sessions, I would like to say thank you to accept my invitation to teacher talks. And it's really great honor to have you it's in our 85th session, Julie. <laughs> a nice number. I like that. Nice round number. <laughs> yeah, it's really a huge number. Yeah, it's 85. Uh, this is the 85th week, you know. It's, it's a great number. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Too many more. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. And so I know that we are all busy and you are busy. Uh, so if you're ready and we can start. Yeah, absolutely. Let's oh, go. Okay, wonderful. I know about you, Julie, but maybe our uh, listeners would like to know about you. And so can you tell us about yourself, please, and a bit about your experiences too? Absolutely. So um, my name is Julie Lechner um, and I am a teacher trainer. Um, I started off um, as a teacher of English some 13 years ago. Um, and then um, I think it was about two years in my career that I decided that I wanted to be a teacher trainer, that I wanted to help teachers um, mm. develop and be better. Um, so in 2015, I actually, I packed my bags and I moved to Izmir in Turkey. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's where I started my teacher training career. And I've been I've been uh, training teachers on several continents um, ever since, both face to face and online. Um, mostly, I do Celta and Delta training, um, mm -hmm. but I also I also do um, CLIL training or bespoke training um, courses for for several schools. Um, so yeah, I try to keep my hand in uh, in everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Julie. Okay. So, and what was what was your uh, turning or were let's say turning point or points in your own education? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, actually, I have to I have to say that I didn't um, train to be a teacher. Um, mm -hmm. I trained to be a diplomat. My goal wow. was to be yeah yeah. My goal was to be an ambassador. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to school for that. Um, I did my uh, my bachelor's degree in um, cultural studies and European studies. Um, I did my master's in European studies. Um, but during my master's, I had a little bit more time that I would usually um, have. And that's mm -hmm. where I said, you know, um, while I'm trying to get my diplomatic career off the ground, I still, <laughs> I need, um, I need, I need, um, I need a job and uh, I knew English. Um, so I started off, um, as an English teacher mm -hmm. and I loved it. I liked it. Um, I thought it was incredibly rewarding. I got to put all of the things that I learned to good use because most of my classes were with expats. Um, some of my classes were at um, embassies. I did a little bit of Romanian teaching as well or mm -hmm. uh, teaching English for people working for, for, for the embassies. Um, and I just discovered this world of ELT um and yeah i said you know what this is a much more rewarding immediately rewarding <laughs> um, um career path so i said you know what this is what i'm going to do for the rest of my life <laughs> oh, so, yeah that was point. the first yeah. 
Mm -hmm. That that was the first um, turning point, and um, I was lucky to work with a school that had a very good professional development um, program, so I learned a lot on the job, Mm -hmm. and I learned a lot from from great people and, um, you know, very, very famous people. We had... um, um, People, we had trainers, very renowned trainers, uh, people who wrote books coming in and doing sessions for us. Um, and I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to, <laughs> to help. <laughs> I want to be like them. I want to help. I want to share my, um, my ideas. And everybody said, you know what? You've got, um, you've got uh, the instinct for it. So why not? And I said, that's going to be my path. I'm going to do my Delta and then I'm going to move into, into teacher training. And that wow. was the defining moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. It's a great moment. It's a great turning point. Absolutely. About you. Thank you yeah. for sharing it with us. All right. <laughs> so when you, uh, when you think about your, the, all your experiences about ELT mm. and probably you have a kind of a teaching style that you focus mm. on, or you have a kind of a philosophy that you use, so mm-hmm. in this in this case, what is your philosophy of teaching? Um, that's a very good question and um, a question that I've been thinking very carefully about um, for the past couple of years. Um, it, it, there's always sort of this dichotomy between teaching and learning. Mm-hmm. And um, at the beginning, when when I was mostly a teacher of students of learners, um, there was a lot of emphasis on on learning, on making sure that this is a good and positive experience for them. Mm-hmm. Um, lately, I've tried to shift my perspective and look at it from the perspective of the teacher. Um, and I, I know that uh, you know it might be a bit. I'm. Um, probably in the minority here, but I do think that good teaching leads to good learning. And being um, being a, a, a model for your learners leads to good learning. So I think that my, my, my philosophy of learning is also sort of my, my motto, which is what we need to do is to create better mm-hmm. teaching experiences. And I, I like this word experience because it can mean several things. It's not just, you know, coming in the class, teaching what you have Mm -hmm. to teach, and then just leaving. It's not only getting students from point A to point B, but within that journey from point A to point B, making sure that the students experience a positive, not only feeling, um, but um, a positive journey, a positive um, atmosphere, um, and that you enrich them. You go the extra mile. You don't just enrich their language, but Mm -hmm. you enrich their perspective on the world, um, their perspective on themselves. And I think that as language teachers, I think that language, the language classroom is suitable for that. Um, definitely, definitely in my experience as a learner, uh, as a learner of English, because English is not my, my mother tongue, um, my English classes were the most formative, I see. Uh, because you, you learn to think in another language, to express yourself in another language, and you find your identity through another language. Yes. And that's what I've always tried to sort of I instill see in my in my learners but also in 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 my teachers i understand it's a very interesting point that you mentioned here about the philosophy Mm -hmm. of teaching it's a really nice point you mentioned thank you thank Thank you thank you (laughs) (laughs) thank you all right so let's move to another question that as you know that we are in 2022 and so (laughs) as lots of as lots of people probably you have some kind of expectations from 2022 Mm -hmm. so what are your expectations um actually i have um two major projects in mind for for 2022 um one of them is a more sort of professional project and one Mm -hmm. is also a personal project um as as the um 
in, in terms of the professional project, um, I know that a lot of things are changing. I am a, um, a Cambridge certified tutor, and a lot of things have changed in, in Cambridge, um, starting from Celta and Delta moving online, um, some of the courses disappearing. Um, mm -hmm. And a group of us tutors and trainers got together and we felt the need um, of our voices being heard outside of the sort of the, the institutions. So we're now in the process of creating um, an international association of language teaching accreditation. So what we want to do is um, help centers who want to run professional development courses which are affordable um, and which are accessible, um, run them in a sort of an international framework so that they are recognized um, internationally. So that's the biggest project that we're working on um, uh, this year. Watch this space. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of working on the promotional materials and the operations part of it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that I'm, that I'm very excited about. Um, just because it, I, I know that the online world is taken us by. Um, <laughs> yeah, different, by, different. Yeah, by surprise. But I think that it also got us closer together because you know, we used to meet in conferences, we used to meet, um, but now if we, if we can't do that, it's, we want to create a space where mm. tutors and trainers and teachers can meet, um, can um, build bridges um, and bring affordable uh, professional development um, to, to centers that, you know, where that might not be, might be mm. a possibility. So right. that's the biggest um, sort of professional project um, uh, yeah. that we're they're working you in 2020. Are, ah, you're in 2022. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's yeah. really, yeah. really interesting. And I hope you can have uh, great times with your project in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So okay. And um, let's move to uh, another question. So which is about, as we know that, you know, the, the, Actually, the well-being is a very common, you know, the, the mm. word among the, not only teachers, probably with most mm. of the professions, they also, yeah. the, most of the time they are, you know, the, the, they're telling or they're talking about this term. So, but in terms of the teachers, uh, how can teachers improve their well-being or what should they do to have a the kind of a good well-being? Mm. Um, that's a very good question um, and a question that I feel a bit uh, hypocritical answering <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, my own experience in, in um, March 2020 when this whole mess um, started um, I also went through this phase it was like what am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, all, all of the all of the training courses, all of the face to face training courses cancelled, um, teaching cancelled, uh, schools closing, centers closing, um, and I was like, "What am I going to do now? Um, what am I? You know, do I have to? <laughs> I've put so much effort into into this career. Do I? Can I do anything else?" <laughs> um, and I had teachers that I worked with previously calling me and saying, Julie, what are we doing? And I had to like put up this very, you know, very positive attitude of we'll figure things out. We'll, we'll, we'll take it step by step. And then um, slowly, slowly we moved online. Basically for me, it was the next day I had to conduct everything online um, and transform uh, all of my, all of my materials and everything into um, easily deliverable materials online. Um, and I have to say that for me particularly, and I know that other teachers feel this way, online teaching, whether we like it or not, whether we, we miss face-to-face -face or not, that's a whole different aspect. Mm -hmm. But it is here to stay, and it has saved our assets financially, if I may say so. <laughs> um, and it, 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 is definitely, it is definitely here to stay. But one of the things that I have noticed is that, uh -huh. for various reasons, is that we tend to take on a lot more work now. Um, than we did before. Yes, um, our time is, re well, you know, we don't spend so much time on traveling to and fro. Um, everything is so instant. You know, you turn on uh, Zoom or whatever platform you do, uh, you work with, and yeah, you're there, you're teaching, and we take on, we, we tend to say no a whole lot less. I don't know. 
I don't know if that's your experience, <laughs> but that has been my my experience. And you do get screen fatigue, you do get burnt out, um, and you have, especially you know, if you're if you're dealing with adults that have other commitments as well. If you're dealing with young learners who have parents, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very emotionally draining. I feel. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people, a lot of teachers, because they're very empathic, um, mm -hmm. they 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 suffer because there's there's that lack of connection there, um, mm -hmm. and also we can make up for that, and probably that's a, that's something for 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 another day. Um, but you know, online teaching can be effective and can be can be well managed, but it does take ten percent more energy from us. It's Definitely. basically 110%. Um, so we have, this is the world that we, we now inhabit. And mm. it's, it's difficult. And, you know, we have to think of our well-being. And um, I say our well-being as, um, as teachers as well. Mm -hmm. um, and to, to go back to the question, what we can do is, well, I, as I said, Find someone. I think the most important thing is find someone to talk to, even if yes. it's just to vent. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just to vent. Even if it's just don't lose don't lose that connection. Um, even if it's someone that you don't know or you know, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm on exactly. I'm connected twenty four seven. Um, um, I'm happy. I'm happy to 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 lend a helping ear. Um, also, this has given me the the a little bit of more time off at the beginning has given me a chance to mm -hmm. um, focus more on the coaching side of things. So um, I'm trying to. That's probably a, one of the the personal projects for 2022 is get um, maybe more coaching awareness um, mm -hmm. in the teacher community. But I think that it's important to create a community and it's important to um, develop a culture of support. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it starts with one person, two people uh, talking, three people talking, four people talking. It starts like this um, on Instagram, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on, <laughs> on, on whatever. So find that, that, that buddy. <laughs> Yes, that's really, um, really find, useful. Find a support system. Exactly. That would be the first thing I would I would recommend. Is find someone mm -hmm. you you can keep in touch with, um, who can who can listen to you. Um, go if you if you're interested in in the more coaching aspect, get in touch mm -hmm. with a professional coach. It's it's very 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 helpful. Um, and I think the most important thing number three is set boundaries. We need uh -huh. to get better. We need to get better at setting boundaries between our professional lives and our personal lives. Um, it is That's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all working about it. <laughs> we're still working on it, but it, it starts with, um, with, with sometimes saying no. You know, no, I cannot take this uh, project now, or no, I cannot take this much amount of work now. No, I you know, I cannot be reached after six o'clock or something like that. Um, and yeah, it starts, it starts with, um, it starts with this. And I think that's, I that's the big first, first step. I, I watch see. a lot of Instagram motivational reels. <laughs> and I find that, you know, okay, you know, you know, say, you know, um, these are the you know, positive affirmations that you can, and I find, I find it, it, it helps, you know, whatever, uh, whatever works for you. But definitely for me has been having um, a, a system of support in enforcing that culture of support, mm -hmm. um, reaching out, being reached um, by by former trainees, by teachers, talking, keeping in touch, yes. um, mm -hmm. using social media as much as I can. I had last year I finished um, 100 days of ELT and every day I would post something, um, an insight wow. into methodology mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, and things for things for myself um, and for my and my for my profession. And I'm trying to think of um, other ways that I can I can sort of reach out, branch out um, and 
be available to to yeah, to I others see. in a nice way. I see. It's a really good point that you mentioned, especially the last one. Probably we are all, you know, the struggling to set a boundaries about the professional yeah. life and, the, yeah. you know, the private life. But, you know, <laughs> if you are a teacher, it's really difficult to do that, I think. That's it, is, <laughs> it is very difficult. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about training in general, not just ELT training, uh, but uh -huh. the training in general. Um, and she said, you know, I'm tired of participating in these trainings where, you know, you have a presentation and someone just reading off the presentation and talking about things. And I saying like you know you should really come to one of my trainings because I put a lot of effort into making sure that you know it's tailored to everybody's needs and she was saying like wasn't it isn't it time consuming and tiring to do that to just <laughs> cater to everyone I was like yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> and I think if I may um this has always been um wherever I worked Uh, all the schools I work, this is this has always been the feedback. You know, Julie, you work too much. Julie, it's you know, good is good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> I see. But my my secret philosophy of teaching is that, and this is a secret. <laughs> I'm sharing it with you. But okay, it's it's, just, it's going to be stay between you and me. Don't worry. Yes, about it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My secret philosophy of teaching and training is this: if you want quality teacher training quality teaching quality training you have to put in the hours you mm -hmm. have to put in the effort um even when you're you're good enough even when you know you've reached uh, you have the confidence um you do have to put in the effort i'm i'm not i am always envious of people who can just wing it i've never mm -hmm. been able to wing it i need you know i need I need Volkan to send me the questions for this. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, but no, if if you want quality training, uh, then you have to put in the work. That's all. That's all there is to it. I And quality that. teaching. That's that's all there is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's really, you know, the, again, you you know, the mention really in a nice and the very, you know, the critical points that you mentioned about it. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thank you. No, all right. Okay. So let's back to kind of the lesson, lesson plan, mm. all right? It's very yeah. interesting. I really wonder what are you going to tell us about it? And can you tell us about a lesson that mm. didn't go to your plan? Like, and what happened? And <laughs> what did you to do to fix it? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I, 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 I'm going to choose an online lesson. Um, that I recently did, um, just because I think that it might resonate with a lot of the teachers teaching online. Mm -hmm. um, so this was my first time uh, meeting and teaching this particular group. Yeah. Um, it was a... Um, It was a monolingual group. It was a Turkish, um, a Turkish group, um, intermediate level. Um, mm. This is the first time they'd met each other. The first time they'd met me. Um, it was, it was, it was very nice. Intermediate, as I said. So probably a, you know, um, very independent, very fluent. Mm -hmm. And I prepared, um, I prepared a lesson, and the the lesson was supposed to be one hour and a half, so ninety minutes. And I prepared a lesson, and I think I was done with the lesson in about 45 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I was done with all of my activities, um, everything. And I was like, okay. <laughs> What I'm going to do now? <laughs> What am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? Um, and... Uh, And we were, you know what, we finished at this point where they were really getting into it, you know what, mm -hmm. and I, you know, they were like, okay, now it was a vocabulary lesson, um, it was on something on phrasal verbs, um, and then I just said, okay, you know what, we're just going to, I gave them loads of feedback on the language, um, and then I just came up with another speaking activity. And I sent them to the breakout rooms, and then every like five or seven minutes, I would change their um, their pairs in the breakout rooms, give them even more feedback on language. <laughs> It's nice one, nice solution. Uh, yeah, 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 nice solution. Um, and they left. They, they, I mean, at the start of the of the lesson, they were very. 
uh, timid, very shy. Some of them were camera shy. Um, some of them I could see, some of them not. And uh, at the end of those 45 minutes, um, they had, you know, they had really developed a, a rapport with each other, a rapport with me. And I was like, damn, I can't finish the lesson here. <laughs> you still have 45 minutes to go. Um, so I just um, I I added another 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 speaking task, but what was important for me and something that I discussed because I was being observed um, at that time and the point oh. that I was yeah <laughs> and the point that I was talking to my observers um, there are a couple of things couple of insights from that lesson and something that I would like to share with with the teachers especially those teaching online but it also applies to to face to face um, one. Online teaching does tend to take, well, it's very difficult to assess timing in an online mm -hmm. lesson. Um, usually it takes a little bit longer than face-to-face -face because of internet connection, because of setting Definitely. up breakout rooms and so on. Um, but there might be situations like this where um, it might take less or the students are way better than I anticipated. Um, so flexibility is very, very important. You have mm -hmm. to... Uh, build flexibility in your lesson plan. And then two ways you can do that. One, um, usually people don't have my problem. Uh, people tend to run over time. So you have to be able to shorten, streamline, or skip tasks. Uh -huh. That's that's the, so I call it the 3S framework. Um, yes, but if you're teaching... Yeah, if you're a teacher that um, had my problem, um, uh, which is being under time, having time left, <laughs> um, it's very important that your lesson be um, contextualized and also um, that it has a running theme or a topic throughout. Um, for example, my lesson was um, uh, about sightseeing, about visiting different um, cities, because my 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 um, students were Turkish. I was I was uh, in Romania, um, so having this this theme visiting cities of cities of cities they would like to visit when they can travel again um, of recommendations they could make uh -huh. to me if I wanted to to come back to to Turkey again this helped me come up with speaking activities because I just didn't pull like a random speaking activity I pulled something that was um, useful so um, they had to come up with places in Turkey that I would like to visit uh, and they had to, they had a little competition um, between themselves um, on where, you know, what are the places that they would recommend uh, me to go to. And I was able to mm -hmm. come up with this because of this running theme, because I of see. this topic that was in each stage of my lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit easier to, um, to manage. So yeah, that was that was the lesson. Um, a little bit, you know, panic <laughs> midway. <laughs> yeah, but From, well, I can get, I can imagine that. <laughs> you know, like mm, what do I do now? Um, but then um, it had a, it had a it had a good outcome, and that's down to being flexible and having a good generative context and something that is related to um, uh, something that is real life. Something mm -hmm. that students would do um, in in real life, and I thought, you know what, um, if if I meet someone from another country, I would like to know places, things that I could do, um, and I try to recreate that as much as I possibly can in my nice. in my lessons. I see. Yeah. Thank you. So it was a happy <laughs> ending. <laughs> <laughs> that was really nice, you know, the you know the covering or the rest of the lesson. This is really nice and very creative yeah. in a way. Okay, so thank, thank you. you very much for sharing this moment with us. And okay, let's move to another question. My next question mm -hmm. is about the countries that you have worked. Like when you compare when you compare the countries that you have worked mm -hmm. as a trainer or a teacher. What was the best moment that you still remember? Mm. Um, well, I think that in, in every country and in, in every sort of culture that I go and, and, and teach in, 
um, it has a special moment for me. Um, when I when I moved to to Turkey, um, it was really nice. I loved it. It was the best time of my life. Uh, <laughs> it was a formative period for me because I was also learning really nice. to be a, a teacher <laughs> trainer. Um, and but what I what I appreciated um, was how warm the students are and I think that a lot of the the, the philosophy of a culture of support that um, I developed mm -hmm. later on comes from my experience with mm -hmm. with uh, with Turkish learners and Turkish teachers it's just such a nice blending of professional and personal attachment um, I know that you know once I walk in a classroom I would have students very curious people, uh, young people, older people, are just very, very curious to know where you're from, to make you feel welcome, to make you feel part of a community. And that is something that I have not experienced as such when I moved into the West. Um, so it was definitely something, something that I, um, I appreciated and something that I definitely miss um, in uh, teaching in, in teaching and training in, uh, in Turkey. I mean, in five minutes, everybody knew everything about me. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, probably. But you're taking really nice comments. The best teacher ever. And I don't know, by the way, sending you the hearts about it thank you, so <laughs> thank much, you very Daddy. much thank you very much <laughs> thank you about it. um when I moved into the West, so I moved from Turkey to to Scotland. Um, it was it was a different it was a different environment. It was a more um, diverse environment because we got students and teachers from um, from different um, from different countries and from wildly different um, cultures. And it was a good test for me to again mm -hmm. to instill that culture of support and that rapport in. A community that was very diverse um, and a community that had very different needs um, and very different backgrounds. We had uh, young people, older people, people who didn't speak a word of English but needed to work and need an English for work. Um, so it was it was a different challenge and a different struggle. Um, mm -hmm. to meet these people halfway and um, make sure that we we bring that nice communal experience um to to our to our classes so that was that was definitely the challenge then to bring of that tight knit community that was so easy to create in places like turkey because the culture is like that but to bring that into a more individualistic culture it was it was the challenge and a challenge i think that i was i was um happy to to overcome so i have yes, yeah. um we created a lot of nice safe spaces uh, and communities for for people of different backgrounds to express themselves and to develop their mm -hmm. their english and to make friends because it's very as as an expat or as an immigrant it's very difficult to to make friends outside of your of your of your social Country. circle and if you come there alone Mm -hmm. It's um, it's it's also even even more difficult, and I still keep in touch with um, uh, people that I've met in in Scotland and students that I have taught in uh, in Scotland, um, and I'm always happy to see you know when they get jobs and <laughs> when they develop, and it's 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 uh, it's a really nice thing. Um, after Scotland, I I became a freelancer and I I sort of traveled the world, um, and I think that. Again, an experience that reminded me very much of Turkey and an experience that I absolutely loved, although it was incredibly challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I spent um, some time, a couple of months in Kazakhstan. Oh. Uh, yeah, as part of, um, of a national project to develop um, CLIL competencies in teachers. Wow. Yes. It's really hard. Uh -huh. Very, very demanding, very challenging in um, in areas where, you know, we had to go back to the basics. We had a blackboard and chalk um, and uh, mixed ability, large mixed ability groups. Wow. Uh -huh. wow. <laughs> but again, it was incredible to see how, you know, as a as a foreign someone that 
that looks very different from um, what you would, <laughs> would from everybody else there. Um, <laughs> Yeah. To see, I mean, I, we would have children, little kids stopping on the street and going like, <laughs> these people, <laughs> they look very, very different from us. Um, but the teachers were extraordinary and so, so determined to better themselves. They jumped mm -hmm. at this opportunity. We had um, teachers from um, very, very solid, strong backgrounds, but we also had teachers teaching in rural areas with limited access to technology um, and just to see this again this this willingness and this patience and um, also they, they 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 helped us a lot in this process of, of, of teaching so it was just a nice little um, joining of, of teaching and learning and I'm what I appreciated the most is curiosity oh, and interest. yeah that's really important mm -hmm. I think, you know, some, uh, I see this in, in some teachers on maybe on Celta courses, mostly on Delta courses that, you know, they hit a plateau. You know, we talk a lot about learners hitting a plateau, the intermediate plateau. Um, but a, a lot of teachers also hit that plateau. Mm -hmm. And um they get stuck in a rut and they you know they teach the same types of classes the same types of lessons and that spark of curiosity um sometimes diminishes it's not gone it's not gone i believe that a teacher the the curiosity is never gone but it's diminished under responsibilities under admin work admin pressure and so on um but it was lovely to see um, a group of trainers, of uh, which I was part of, go into a class that had mixed abilities, mixed interests, mm -hmm. and just give 200% and just kindle that, that spark of curiosity. And even if it was a little thing that they, those teachers took from us, um, it meant a lot for, my, for us. It meant I a see. lot that at the beginning they couldn't give instructions in English to teach uh, biology or physics but at the end they were able to give instructions they were able to run experiments in English and it was it was one of the best feelings ever and something that uh, I miss so if I have any of my, my my Kazakh teachers here thank you very much you guys are always in my heart the wonderful Wonderful moments that you had over there and in different countries, yeah. by the way, it's really, you're yeah. lucky then. <laughs> Thank you very much also <laughs> for sharing this, this lovely moments with us, Julie. And you're welcome, you're welcome. Would you like to add anything else or move to the next question? Yeah, yeah, we can go ahead and move to the next question. Okay, so this question is really, uh, I really wonder what you're going to say because it's, I always, you know, think about when think about these questions you know the different ideas come to my mind so mm -hmm. what sets what sets the esl learning environment apart from a general education classroom mm. yes um i think again it's uh, you know people ask you what what's your job well i'm a teacher um who do you teach i teach people <laughs> <laughs> I teach adults or I teach um, young learners. What do you teach? Uh, English. Oh, okay, so you teach like grammar and vocabulary and all that. And I was like, that is a very small part mm -hmm. of what I'm teaching. Um, and I think that that is a shift in perspective that I always encourage my teachers to experiment with. We are not teachers of grammar. We are not teachers of vocabulary. We are not teachers because we are not teaching linguists, right? Mm -hmm. We are teaching people to operate in the real world, to exactly. integrate in a community, whether it's a professional community, whether it's a cultural community. And we are helping students, people. <laughs> we, are helping, we are helping people become better versions of themselves finding their identity in another language mm -hmm. wow. i it's think that really, that is yeah it's a really good point yeah. about mm -hmm. yeah oh. because i mean it's not we're not again we're not teaching grammar we're not teaching the present perfect we are teaching 
you know, what can you do in real life with Definitely. the present perfect? Mm-hmm. Why do you need the present perfect? I don't know. Maybe I want to go to an interview and I want to talk about my experience so far. Well, then mm-hmm. that's a moment where I use the present perfect. Um, so I think that it's, it's, it sounds easy and mm-hmm. it resonates with a lot of people, but it is difficult to, to make a change because um, we're so used, okay, like present perfect, uh, verb to have, plus past participle, blah, 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 blah. We use this, mm-hmm. but we never stop to think, okay, when in real life, you know, we know the meaning, okay, we used for experiences that have not ended, blah, blah, blah. But, okay, when in real life, give me a context, give me a real life situation, where I have yeah. to use the present perfect, or that I have to use this set of words, or when I have to read this type of articles. And as mm-hmm. much of the real life that we can bring into our classrooms, the more uh, engaging and the more rewarding um, our lessons will be. So I think that that is what sets the ESL or the ELT um, environment apart from from everything else. Because it's not just about learning new things and discovering new things. It's about discovering who you are in Mm -hmm. another, discovering an identity in another another language. And uh, giving people the tools to be their authentic selves um, Mm -hmm. in a second language. I think that that was yes. It's that is you point. you explain this terms really the questions excellent. Thank you very much, you. Julie. Thank really, you. You, you, your ideas and suggestions is marvelous. Thank you very much about it. All right. So, I I would like to ask you another questions about you know the people most of the time probably they're asking you even of your teacher training times they always mm-hmm. ask you to Julie teacher can you give us some examples like you know from your good experiences. Tell us your mm-hmm. good experiences, but this time, you know, I would like to ask you vice versa. Uh, mm-hmm. by, can you tell us one of your bad teaching experiences in your career? Um, a bad teaching experience. Ah, uh, yes. Um, here's 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 <laughs> one that I was kind of thinking of um, which ones I should choose. Um, but I will. Um, I'll tell you one from the beginning of my career, All right. because um, a lot of a lot of novice teachers encountered this. I don't think I was alone. But when I started um, teaching, I had two classes. My first ever two classes were an absolute beginner class, like zero English, <laughs> and an upper intermediate class, uh, lots of English. <laughs> Um, it, they were they were on alternate days every day from eight thirty in the morning to ten o'clock, very early, very early. A group of bankers, um, both of them were. Um, the absolute beginner class was fantastic. Um, they were very very eager to learn. Very you know they had a they were a bit on the older side. And they were like, you know what? I'm just gonna make mistakes. I'm just gonna have fun. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're all we're all having a good time here. Um, the um, upper intermediate class was a class of very good, per- very good students and very, very, very um, ambitious young people. Ambitious. Uh-huh. Very ambitious young people. Um, and this was my first time ever teaching. I didn't have any qualifications. All I had was on the job training. Um, and I, I, I thought I did my best. You know, we went through, through, you know, present perfect. <laughs> when I, I made all the typical mistakes, you know, um, <laughs> and they were, they were very good. Um, I, I, anyway, they were, they were really, really nice. Um, I tried to get them talking. I had a smidgen of pair in group work, but uh, not 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 very much. But anyway, um, a couple of weeks go by, three weeks a month. Uh-huh. I thought it was, everything was going well. Um, some some of the lessons were a little bit more tedious than the others, and then um, my supervisor pulls me up mm-hmm. and sits me down, and I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> <laughs> 
what's happening? What's happening? Um, and she said, listen, Julie, we've had some feedback from HR. Um, mm -hmm. And the students in your upper intermediate class, they said, you're, you're very nice and they like the lessons, but um, they're not, they're not learning anything new. And they're also, they don't think that you're good enough. And I was <laughs> like, okay, okay. I was like, fine. Well, this is my first time teaching. It's great. Um, and uh, I was like, but did they mention why they thought that I was not good enough? Well, you know, they said that, you know, the grammar of English, your accent is perfectly fine. You've got no problems with that. Um, but... What they what they're saying is that you're not very good at banking. Banking. Ah. Banking. I think <laughs> banking. So I was like, you, don't, you don't know about the banking terminology or the banking stuff. And I was like, um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not a banker. I'm an English teacher. <laughs> and then we sat down with HR. And apparently what these people expected, they thought that they had enrolled in um, a banking training uh program so oh, they I thought that I was there to teach them international banking and oh uh, and I was like dude no I don't, I don't know what these terms mean because I, I'm an English teacher I mean I, yeah, I have well, a book first. I have um and then they realized that there had been a miscommunication between the students and HR and uh and uh, and yeah, and I thought well, that was a waste of time for both me and because I put a lot of effort into those into those <laughs> lessons. My first teaching, I, I would spend hours making sure that you know I go through every step, that I have all the materials I needed, that I have all the explanations ready. Um, and it was just a waste of time for me because yeah, okay, um, but also for them. Um, because they're, they came in with expectations, um, mm -hmm. that were not met. Um, and yes, they had a good time because I like to think that I'm a positive presence in the classroom, but yeah. they weren't getting anything out of the, um, um, out of the program. So yeah, that was, uh, that taught me the value of communication um, and not just between, you know, departments, but between you and, um, and your students. And what I should have done, but I was too afraid and too young to, to do it was just, you know, when I, cause I noticed that things were not going well, it's just sit with, to sit down with my students and ask them, listen, guys, is this okay? Are we learning something new? Um, is there something more that I can do? Um, and I always try to find moments in my classes or when I have, you know, longer, longer um, courses to, to, to do that with, with uh, my students, just, you know, me and my, uh, um, my students. Um, and mm -hmm. we do this on, on training courses. Uh, because we have to, it's part of the of the standards. But I think it's something that we need to do at um, um, in 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 regular classes as well. And it was a bad experience for me because it was an embarrassing experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was too. You know, it's very very kind of weird. You know, <laughs> that's the situations that happen over exactly. there. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I thought, you know, okay, but. <laughs> Um, and I always kind of cringe when I when I, when I think about it. But um, yeah, I still I still think of those um, students, that group of students coming in every day at eight thirty, hoping to get international <laughs> banking training and just getting Julie harping on about second conditionals. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. grammar centric approach. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah. Yeah, but it's said in the past, not right now. It's okay. It's really nice. Yeah. Thank you very much, Julie. Really, it's a nice <laughs> moment that you share with us. It's really great. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So let's move some other questions. Like, can you, Julie, it's again about, about the teachers. Like, can you tell us about five adjectives to mm -hmm. describe an effective language teachers? Yes. Um, number one, flexible. Um, okay. mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think this is this is very important, and especially in terms of lesson pl lesson planning. Mm -hmm. Build flexibility in your lesson plans. Your lesson plan is a guide. It's not 
what needs to necessarily transpire in your in your lesson um just like my experience with my my group of bankers um sometimes you can if you see that you're you know you're not meeting the students needs then you know you can you can uh, go off course but more on the right path path to to the outcome so i think that's that's the first one okay. second is curious um okay. We talked a little bit about that spark of curiosity and just come to peace with the fact that language teaching is changing. Mm -hmm. The way we taught 10 years ago, 13 years ago when I started teaching is vastly different from yeah. now because it's, It, we have more more things coming in from we learn more things from cognitive psychology from uh neuroscience and their developments and advancements there mm -hmm. that shape the way we we teach and that's okay um it doesn't mean that the way you taught wasn't effective it doesn't mean that you haven't produced good learners of english um but keep that curiosity and that willingness to experiment moving forward um because it's it's an ever changing environment and if if we're stuck in that plateau we're going to be good teachers but we are missing the chance to be great teachers mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to be to be um curious. Mm -hmm. Curious. Right. Um number 3 3 positive. Positive, okay. <laughs> positive. Um I don't want to to you know um encourage toxic positivity like everything will be all right. <laughs> um but keep a positive outlook on on life uh, and on teaching and on the situation that that we're in we are given some tools and we have to make the best use of those tools mm -hmm. and just constantly whinging about okay this doesn't work this doesn't work this doesn't work it doesn't but how can we you may be right but how can we make it better so okay. i'm always saying like positive means not only okay you know happy going and flowers and butterflies and stars everywhere but it's also um related to um i think number four uh in the list of adjectives which is solution oriented oh okay that's another point uh huh yes so things are going to go wrong in your lessons whether you're teaching face to face or um uh, teaching online um things aren't going to go uh, according to plan unexpected things may happen be solution oriented mm -hmm. um you at the in the moment that it happens it's not just enough you know oh it's the student's fault or oh it's the technology's fault or oh it's the no the problem the how the problem came to be that's something for us to to think about later but at the moment we need to think of how we can fix the problem we, you can't change the past but you can definitely influence the uh, the future mm -hmm. and um so that's number four, solution oriented and um, mm -hmm. the last one the last one um Um, um, there are the many, many, many. It's it's difficult because there are many things that um, a good teacher should be. Um, but I think a good teacher should be patient. Ah, oh, patient. Also another point. Uh huh. Yes, okay. patient with their students, but also patient with themselves. Mm -hmm. Some things may not go according. Uh, may not turn out the way you want them to but that not that's not always your fault and you have to be patient with yourself mm -hmm. and um try again and maybe better results will be on their way i see perfect this is the last one five <laughs> adjectives <laughs> behind <laughs> Got it, got it, <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you, Julie. And I don't know, also, I don't know, Jim mentioned like inspiring. Yeah, also, that's also really important. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, also. yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, okay, so <clears throat> that's moved another question which is related about the uh, teaching uh, young learners. So, mm. what are the challenges of teaching young learners maybe mm. you know this this question you know uh, we can talk about it hours and hours but maybe just one or two 
things if you can mention that can be really nice um i'm going to to be very very honest here and say that i have some experience with teaching young learners um but not as much as i have experience with um with adults mm -hmm. um <laughs> and on a, on a on a funny note Young learners are fine. They're great. They're wonderful. Um, yes, we can have the, um, we can, they're much more disciplined and much more um, receptive to discipline and receptive to structure than um, adults. Um, they are, remember I talked a little bit about um, finding our identities in another language. Working with teenagers has always been, a very demanding but very rewarding experience for me because you are seeing these people at the brink of adulthood um, trying to 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 express themselves in another language and trying to be authentic to themselves um, in another language. Um, so there's that. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm going to be a bit... Can I be controversial here, Volkan? Sure, sure, sure. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know... It's my father had a saying, it's not the children, it's the parents. <laughs> I, I the problem with teaching is never about the young learners. It's never about it's about um, sometimes it's about the parents who it's the parents that have very high demands from um, young learners. And these demands are just generation, generation to just get higher and higher and higher and higher. And uh, in my experience, I've always tried to kind of, you know, ask my learners, you know, why do you want to be here? Because you had before that, you had five classes, uh, extracurricular activities. After English, you're going to have go to mm -hmm. football or math or German or whatever and do a thousand things. But um, why do you want to be here, you know? Um, and I've always tried to give them the space to express themselves in in mm. in the way they like, but it is very difficult. Um, and it is it's it's I have the utmost admiration for um, my colleagues who teach young learners um, and who are so incredibly creative and so incredibly uh, determined. And they are they are the true role models for um, for our children. And um, it's it's just a different it's just a different thing, um, because when it comes to to teaching adults, um, yes, you you can be a friend, you can be a coach, um, you can be a listener. But when you're teaching young learners, you are um, a role model. You are the person that they're going to look up to and they're going to remember because you are there with them in their formative years. Um, mm -hmm. And the experience, especially in the English language classroom, is formative for young learners um, because that's where they, they, they have the, the, the freedom, especially in a communicative English classroom, to express themselves and to, um, and to, 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 to become people. <laughs> <laughs> more people <laughs> yeah more people um, really yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so yeah i think that that is um that's that's the the shortest answer i i can um i can give <laughs> okay thank you very much julia about it that's really short and sharp <laughs> okay nice one. <laughs> okay you. great thank you all right so let's move to by the way just i just have uh, just two or three questions left because yep. time flies really yeah and uh, almost <laughs> an hour we're completing okay so thank let's move to you. another Fun questions. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, what would it be, and how would it help you? Um, it's a. I like this question because it's a question that I ask my my teachers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to call it um, the super monitor. Uh huh. Um, because this is again. Um, my belief that when it comes to classroom management, the foundations of classroom management are simple. There are three big rocks, instructions, monitoring, and feedback. Yeah. Give clear instructions and students will know how to complete the task. Mm -hmm. um, if they're on the task, then that makes your monitoring a lot easier. 
um, because you can focus on task achievement, you can focus on areas where you can be of help to students, um, you can focus on their performance and see what they did well, what they struggled with, and that informs the feedback. And yes. feedback is actually where teaching happens. Um, teaching doesn't happen when we explain, clarify, present grammar, vocabulary, functional. That's not where it happens. That just gives us the tools. Real teaching happens in feedback where, where students encounter and use language in a, in a task, in, a, in as much of a contextualized task as we can. Um, and they're applying the things that they're, they're using the tools that we've given them. Um, so in order for that very important stage of feedback to happen, I need to be able to monitor uh, fairly effectively mm -hmm. um, so that I, I have the tools to sharpen my feedback and make sure that it is as helpful and as responsive as possible. Mm -hmm. So yes, that was, that was the one that, um, I, I, that's a superpower, a super <laughs> monitor. Um, I if I could just monitor everyone at the same time, um, obviously it's, 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 it's unrealistic. Um, and I tell, I'll tell my, my, uh, um, teachers, because that's a, that's a complaint I always hear. Well, you know, jumping from breakout room to breakout room is really difficult. It's like, this is the age old complaint. Even in face to face courses, I would hear the same thing. Like, I can't, go, I can't listen to all the groups, or they're talking too loudly, or they're. <laughs> yes, but the more practice you get, the more, um, the better, the better you'll become. But it would be nice to have this sort of super monitor power and be able to listen to everyone at the same time okay. and remember what they want to say. So that Definitely. feedback is a lot more effective. Yeah, it's a very effective superpower to use in language <laughs> classes. <laughs> it's a great one. Okay, true, true. so let's. Uh, I know that you know. Uh, probably I can't know, but maybe probably I'm. I, I'm. Uh, you have read lots of books about ELT, probably. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and we are also you know the curious about ELT because we're English language teachers and we want to read some different mm -hmm. books. Can you uh, mm -hmm. can you suggest us? to read about the LT, some books? Absolutely, absolutely. I've got three major um, suggestions, um, and they are related to trends in ELT at the moment. So um, we are seeing, um, we talked a little bit about that, and I think that someone also mentioned about teaching grammar. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that one, for me, one of the most eye-opening uh, books on how to teach grammar in a way that is helpful and responsive and a little bit more useful for learners is Danny Norrington Davis's um, mm -hmm. From Rules to Reasons. Okay. Um, and if I can summarize this book in one, in, in, in a short sentence, it's about how you know, we, we always tell, correct me if I'm wrong, but what do we tell our students? I mean, these are the rules in English, but there are some exceptions, right? <laughs> yes. And Danny does this wonderful thing of saying, you know, instead of focusing so much, it's okay if we focus on the rules. Rules are helpful. They're, they're little signposts that help us and help the students. But it's more important to focus on uh, reasons, to get mm. students to critically think, okay, why are we using the present perfect or the second conditional here? Um, what elements from um, the situation or from the text or from what I want to say help me decide which structure, which grammatical structure to use? Okay. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And this is also um, grounded in some advancements in cognitive psychology and advances in neuroscience. And one of the yes. um, things that have shaped second language acquisition recently is mm -hmm. um, exploratory questioning. Uh -huh. We learn better if we ask questions. And if we are yes. able to critically answer questions. So instead of you know, saying, all right, uh, we use the present perfect here because blah, 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 blah. All right, why do we use the present perfect here? Show me evidence from what you said or from this text or from this exactly. exercise mm -hmm. that tells you uh, how to do that. And I love Danny's book. It's a very, it's a, a, a good length 
um, it's it has some good theory, but it also has some good practical examples. So mm -hmm. uh, just a very nice introduction to this more contextualized um, and this sort of shift in perspective when it comes to teaching grammar. Um, it doesn't say that, you know, the, what, what we're doing with, with sort of um, explore, uh, explanatory grammar or, you know, the presentation is wrong. It's just, okay, that's not enough. It's one step, but we need to teach our students to critically think um, of why. So right. that's definitely one um, of, uh, of my uh, um, suggestions. Um, mm -hmm. Number two, um, well, number two and three are about receptive skills, reading and listening. There's been a lot of uh, listening specifically has been um, the subject of intense research lately in ELT um, because the way listening and reading um, are presented in course books, very top-down um, approach, very based on comprehension, may not actually help as much in developing uh, good listeners. And we need to um, compensate with more bottom-up skills. Um, and again, this relates to how we process information in, um, in, in our brains and how we, we, we decode incoming information. Um, and one of the, um, the, the best books um, on this subject um, are written by Richard Caldwell. Um, one of them is a syllabus for, for listening and the phonology of listening. Um, and again, it's written in a very, <clears throat> there are two books, a syllabus for listening and a phonology I for listen, listening. Um, and it's, they're written in very, very straightforward language, very approachable. Um, and it just shows a very different perspective on what we thought listening should look like, a listening lesson should look, look like in the, the language classroom. Um, it will be a while until this is fully incorporated into course books and into, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very, very recent um, research, but I think it's a very interesting step forward. Um, and third one, <clears throat> Um, this has to do with uh, with reading and traditionally listening and reading have been taught in the same way. But the question lately has been this. Um, when in real life do we actually answer comprehension questions? We read the text and then we have a list of questions um, that we need to we need to answer. Um, and it's a very good question. Um, and I think that the answer can be found in um, um, Peter Watkins's um, Teaching and Developing Reading Skills. Mm -hmm. And it's a lovely book because, again, it has a very good balance between theory and practice with very nice activities that incorporate, again, this top-down comprehension approach, but with more bottom-up and with more um, real-life tasks and just utilizing texts for the reason that they were uh, written for. Um, and I think this is, again, another sort of um, nice shift in perspective. And I think that's, <clears throat> in terms of ELT advancements, this is the way we're moving. We're moving into integrating language in life in thinking more about, okay, all of these skills, all of these systems, how do we use them in real life and how can we recreate that in the language classroom? I see, thank you. Thank you very much for these no suggestions, Julie. But after the <clears throat> session, if you can just send me the name of the books and Absolutely. the writers, I, yeah. Can, yeah. I can share it. I can share Definitely. it uh, so like they can reach them. All right, so here is the last question. Are you ready for it? <laughs> All right, let's hit me okay. with it. <laughs> what is your motto? Uh, creating better teaching experiences. Okay, I think. Wonderful. <laughs> this is That's it. your motto. This is it. Okay. This is it. Nice. Because <laughs> my yeah, because my my work in the past well, in the past seven years has been with with teachers mostly. Um. That is my goal, to help teachers create better teaching experiences. And I, it is my belief that mm -hmm. those teaching experiences will create better learning experiences. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Julie. And that's all <laughs> from uh, my side about the questions. Thank and you so much. Before, 
before ending uh, our live sessions, uh, would you like to add anything else? Um, I think that we as um, someone mentioned it before in the comments or you mentioned it before that um, English teachers are inspiring. And um, yes, it's true. It's true. Um, in my case, I didn't set out to be inspiring. I think, I think um, this came up. Uh, I, I did an interview when I got the job in Scotland. Um, my um, uh, my interviewer asked me, you know, what what's your defining quality as as a person and as a teacher? And I said, I'm reliable. Um, I can get the job done and I can get good results. And I was I was in a moment in my life when I was doing a lot. And I mm -hmm. felt burnt out and I was like, I don't feel that I'm particularly inspiring. Um, I don't feel like I'm particularly wow. I feel like I'm a teacher that gets the job done and gets good results and everybody's happy. And if everybody's happy, then then I'm happy. And it's always flattering and humbling um, when I get you know, feedback from students and feedback from from um, teachers and former trainees and say, you know, your sessions have inspired me or your way of thinking is inspiring or it has changed the way. Um, and I think that if I can if I can do that, if I can change the mindset from, you know, just teaching off a course book and just um, uh, doing routine things and changing it just a little bit into really, really thinking about what your learners need, um, thinking about how to best change those things inside you that might not meet the students' expectations, that's going to lead to inspiration and being inspired. I still I still don't know what, what makes me inspiring or... Um, <laughs> But um, I still haven't found a formula for, for that yet. Um, but uh, it starts with curiosity. And it starts with, as I said, being solution-oriented, being positive, being all of those um, adjectives. And maybe, maybe that chemistry there, that alchemy there, um, results in, uh, in being inspiring. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. All right, then. So I just before, we, uh, you know, the ending the live session, I just want to say one more time. Thank you to thank being you so with much. us tonight. And it was really fruitful sessions. And also thank you very much for your time, for your suggestions. And uh, these are really wonderful. And your advices, of course, that was really important. And the most important one is your time, which is precious. And you <laughs> spend it with us here. And that was a really pleasure. nice moment for us. And thank you very much. And Julie Lerner was with us tonight with the teacher talks. And we had a really nice session with her. And I'm sure that you had also fun and a great time here. And if you get something really useful, even if one little word or one something about useful from this session, we are really happy. And until next time, which is next Monday, Okay, at the same time and on the same day of teacher talks. And until that time, take care of yourselves and good night, good morning, and good afternoon, wherever you are, everybody. And peace and bye bye. And see you. Thank you so much, guys. Bye bye, Julie. Bye bye.